Hi, I'm Robbie Gordon. I'm the founder of the Hollywood Sculpture Garden, a sculpture garden that we just walked through. 125 steps you walked. Just to let you know, this is your exercise for the day. And there are more than 100 sculptures there by more than 50 different sculptors from all over the world. So Robbie, thank you so much for agreeing to sit down with me today and have a conversation. Also, before we sat down, you walked us through the Hollywood Sculpture Garden and invited us into your home, which is where we are now, which is the Hollywood Gallery. Um, I have so many questions, but before I get into those, what do you think people's first impression of you is? Well, uh, some people say that it's too much. Some, most people really love it. Uh, most, a lot of people are at awe when they come here. Uh, and uh, it usually creates different interesting conversation with different people, sometimes too many. And uh, actually, it was good, especially during COVID, because I was open during COVID and I did by appointment only. On the weekend, I would get and per day 30 to 50 people here. I would put more, not more than six at a time. And that was the time that I felt that I created something for people because people came and said that this was the only place that they can go and appreciate art because all the museums and galleries were closed. And uh, people got engaged here, people had asked uh, to have a romantic dinner, we've rented the place for a fashion show, for a special event, for parties, for dinners, for shooting films. and. So there is a lot of interest and people really like it. And so then what do you think their first impression is of you when they when you open the door to I'll ask them? you the question, you know, they they ask when you ask somebody what is the question, what is what is your impression of me? And then I'll tell you if the people I'll say something similar. So when we first spoke, um, was on the phone setting yeah. this up and I got this friendly vibe and you know, you described how during COVID you really felt like you had created something. Your excitement about what you created came through in that conversation. But when I got here and got to meet you in person for the first time today, your glasses were the first thing that struck me. And I loved them. And so for me, creativity mm. and um, overall acceptance is mm. what I get from you. Very good. Yeah. What Excellent. do you think about that? I think it's very good. Actually, there is an article in the Shout Out LA and I talk about acceptance uh, a lot because my idea is to have a goal and to accept where it, you go is a goal. It doesn't matter if you completely reach it or where you get stuck. The idea is to be accepting of what you, you create and what you do. I think that's an amazing outlook. Oftentimes, I would imagine this happens in art too, yeah. but we get so down on ourselves because yeah. we think we should be a certain thing or a certain no. way. Yeah, exactly. So to accept what, wherever you are and what you do. I love it. Okay, so mm -hmm. you said that you designed your glasses. I am I, so in love with them. I, I have a lot of glasses that I've designed. I can show you I have the whole line. Yeah. And I have a lot of clothes that I've designed. You saw some of the shirts and the ties, but I have a lot more. So when did your love of art start? I started, I have in that room uh, a wood sculpture, small one, that I started doing when I was eight years old. And my mother told me at the time that it was a waste of time to do art and if I'll just do art, uh, it, I won't get anywhere. So she said, you do, you get your career, you do whatever you need and then you do your art. And she was in a way right. I've done art all along, but only in the last 12 or 15 years I've been dedicating completely to the art. The most art I've ever done was during COVID when I worked almost every day. I was working a lot in the garage. I have another studio in the garage. There's the studio downstairs and people were coming and I was creating and they were talking to me from a distance. So. It was every day, up to 10 hours a day. How 
did that make you feel to be it, able to create every day? Uh, it was, uh, the thing is that I'm also a, a person that likes to plan a lot. Uh, when COVID started, actually I was in Australia and I came with the last flight back to America on March 10, the last, fl the last flight from Melbourne to Los Angeles. And um, I didn't know, uh, I used to be veterinarian and I worked in finance and investment and I just didn't know how long it will take and from medical point of view I thought we are talking about two or three years. So I sat down with a long term plan for two or three years what I'm going to do. and. After a year and a half, less than, less than, less than yeah, more than a year, but less than a year and a half, it stopped. So I still have all the plans that I didn't finish, but I've done a lot. It means if you've been here before COVID and after COVID, it's a different of day and night. And I enjoyed it. And I enjoy that I, I had constant interaction with people from far that came to see the, sculpt, the Hollywood Sculpture Garden and they were mesmerized and they loved it and they usually saw me creating things and it was actually not bad. I, I had different plans for my life, but looking back, it was okay. And you mentioned when you were discussing what you did before, you said, did I hear you say you were a veterinarian? Veterinarian, yeah, and then I went also into finance and I had a company for financial planning and for mortgages. I did a lot in my life. It sounds I'm like a human it. doing. You know, a human being and I'm, I hope I'm human being too, but I'm a human doing too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I constantly do. As you see, everything, all the furniture, everything, all the house redone, the vertical blind and everything that you see, I've done. You have a very creative mind. Yeah, I, a lot of the things that you have shown me today are truly incredible. Very, you went to veterinary school. Yeah. Was that at the request of your mom? I, well, the request was to get uh, a degree in something that will be a providing thing. How long did you practice veterinary? I medicine? did. I had after a while. I developed allergy to animals, so slowly, slowly, I also started. I went to study finance and I started working as a financial planner and I opened, at one point, I had three offices in Orange County for mortgages and financial planning. But always had your love for art. Yeah, always. And you yeah. said you did art the whole time. I did, not to the extent, but I did something. It means... What is something that would surprise people to know about you? I don't know what surprise. I'm, I'm, I'm a person, I'm like an open book. I'm not uh, a person that, I don't know, that on one hand I love art, on the other hand I'm very uh, detail-oriented with finance and I still do investment and things like this. So I have both sides. The right and left, left brain. Exactly. Fast at work. Yeah, yeah all the time. That's, that's amazing. And like you said, it allowed you to be able to create and, and then have vision and see things. Yeah, exactly. And you can do that for the financial side and the business world, and then and you can do that in the fun creative side. Exactly. What is your big vision for the Hollywood Sculpture Garden? Well, my plan, uh, I probably need uh, another 100 years to finish everything that I want. Uh, if you okay, got so this place, it was... Um, just a hill with nothing in it uh, that will be good to, for you to see you have your react trails and everything that we walked i still have a lot, some of the trails that we walk were more adventurous because they're not yet completely done but eventually there will be trails everywhere and the sculptures integrated to everything and all the trails as you saw some of the trails will be artistically done what do you hope people feel or get out of being here? A high. When I and go to see special art, I get a high, and that's why I travel to a lot of museums, a lot of um, galleries all over the world, and 
I, and I really enjoy it and I want that people will do have the same thing here. So you have shown me, and Omari, a ton of art pieces today, inside and outside of your beautiful home. Mm -hmm. If Do you have a favorite? It's not that I have a favorite. You know, at certain times I look at something and I say, I really like it. And it, there is, uh, I create, every piece has a meaning to me. But I don't even, I shared some of the meaning with some of the painting. But the point is that it has a meaning when I create it. And then I want you to give it its own meaning. And it could be even different than me. Because I want you to look at it and say, that's what it means to me. So, like, that was, this one, the, the big one here was meaningful. Because I started it at COVID in I finished it when we, I got vaccinated already. So there was a meaning. Uh, there are certain ones that are reflecting my mood, uh, etc. I didn't go through everything. It means downstairs I have a um, painting that I did after, uh, based on the concentration camp, that are in, with barbed wire around it, and uh, they are painted in the, uh, colors of the Nazi flag, but to show how terrible it is. So there are certain things. There is a, a painting of the birth of my son over there, and I call it, you see uh, little dots, and they become like firework, and I call it from sperm to firework. And so there are certain things that have more meaning or less meaning, and uh, certain things that took longer time to create, let's say the tables here, the sofa here. So the pursuit of it uh, till it was created. Uh, and the process is very delicate. Just the like process the is delicate and interesting and engaging and the results are always very rewarding. So do you invite artists to display here or do they request to display in, here? In the beginning I used to invite, there's still some artists that I like their art and I invite them because I think that they are unique, etc. But by now I have more artists that are asking and basically we can hardly keep up with the installation period. It means you saw uh, there's uh, Tim Carter, so he had the red one that was already installed and the two yellow one that we're still doing the cement foundation etc there is an artist that will be coming uh in a week from now with other three sculpture there and there are i have a waiting list of other artists that i have to work and decide where we'll put it how it will be etc so there is a lot of interaction a lot of interesting thing that goes together. And do the sculptures leave at any point or do they well, to stay? Uh, if it is a local one, I'd like to change them every so often. Uh, but if it's something like Nuccio Loretti that came from Italy, uh, Marcella Lopez from Argentina, Jorg from Belgium, etc. The shipping or, the, or if they created it here is so complicated. And so this and I keep them and they're all for sale. We used to have a good sales record. We used to sell an average of 15 per year. During COVID, we sold five, which compared to other galleries was very good uh, for sculptors. And this has been such a fun day and culminating good. with this incredible conversation about your journey hmm. to living your dream, basically. Yes, I do. And I live my dream, exactly. I love it. Yeah. Well, I'd like to close out and ask one final question, if that's okay with you. Everything is okay. I love that. Um, as you're walking around the gallery or the garden or at one of the parties that you're throwing, if you have the opportunity to hold up a sign that says one thing about Robbie, what do you want people to know? It's a good question. Uh, love and acceptance. Thank you.